You are listening to another Always Moto production. The Always Moto Podcast with your host, David Hogan. This show contains information about injuries to riders competing in AMA Supercross, AMA Motocross, MXGP, Pro MX, and other international moto events. The information discussed may be unsettling to some listeners. It might be incomplete or based on medical opinions due to riders tending to hide the details of their injuries. We are here to explain the information and increase injury understanding and visibility for the fans. There might be coarse language and the odd stuff up along the way. If any of this offends you, turn us off right now. I'd like to remind you that he is not a doctor. That's right, Moto fans. I'm not a doctor, but I am a physiotherapist. And this is episode 36 of the Always Moto podcast. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for listening. Thanks for lending me your ears. I am your host. I'm David Hogan, the physiotherapist from Australia with a keen interest in moto. Welcome to the Always Moto podcast. We are in the depths of the clinic throwing strapping tape anywhere it will stick because that's what physios do apparently. As always on the show, we will be going through all things moto and particularly the injuries in our sport because hashtag injuries are a part of moto. It sucks, but that's what happens. This week on the show, we'll be talking all things round three of the Australian Supercross Championship that will be happening this Saturday night in Newcastle. I have a short drive to this race. It's awesome. We'll have the emergency department list for the Australian Supercross. We also have two Australian Supercross rider interviews this episode. We've got Bailey Malkowitz and Jai Roberts, both unfortunately injured, but have had their, had been nice enough to give us their time to chat with the Always Moto podcast. We did that over the last week or so for both those guys. We're finally getting their interviews into the next episode, ready for this round uh, happening this week in Newcastle. But bringing us the show today is Polar Australia. Now, Polar Australia is having their Cyber Week sale on now. It's from the 21st to the 28th of November. So depending on when you're listening to this, make sure you jump into their website. Uh, that website is available in our show notes. So click that link and you'll get a, a help us register as that uh, providing source for them. But you can grab up to 33% off your desired Polar product. Now, Polar has a range of heart rate and activity tracking devices over there on their website. Plenty of good uses there for you and plenty of good products that you can help train with and track your motos and your progress and any ride you might be doing out in the bush um, anywhere, anytime, cycle, moto, run, swim, all that sort of stuff. It's capable of being tracked by a Polar product. So check them out, but make sure you use the link in the show notes. Also having a Cyber Week sale and another supporter of the show is Slantboard Guy. We bring bringing you this product now for a couple of shows now. It's that simple angled board in the gym that helps you squat better. Now don't forget we have an affiliate deal with in place with Slantboard Guy and they're offering 10% discount for all Always Moto podcast listeners. So if you want to get your squats on point in the gym, improve your standing technique on the bike with stronger legs, this simple equipment piece is for you. Use the code ALWAYSMOTO, all in lowercase at checkout. Um, and the link also to their to the purchase is in, their sh- is in the show notes um, and in our bio on Instagram. So make sure you use that link again so that ALWAYSMOTO gets the credit for your purchase. Uh, but also you can, get, can get that, then get that discount. Ugh, tongue-tied early in the show here already, guys and girls. Not too good signs. As always, I still do need your support direct. We have some merch available. Please get in touch to buy an Always Moto t-shirt and rock it at one of the final two rounds of Supercross here coming up for the Australian round. Uh, it'd be awesome to see somebody rocking one of those shirts at one of the rounds. The shirts are $25 plus postage and handling. That's Australian dollars, people. We also have an international drop ship 
set up now available for our US based listeners. So postage is much cheaper now. So get in touch to get your shirt no matter where you are in the world. They are black t-shirts with Always Motor logo front and center and we want you rocking them at the races as we said already. Email us at alwaysmoto2019 at gmail.com to put your t-shirt order in. Put t-shirt order in the subject line. Send us the size you want and we'll be in touch regarding payment via PayPal. Now talking about PayPal, we also have the ability to have donations sent to the Always Moto podcast via our PayPal app Um, and that link is in our show notes. Um, please use that. Please support the show. And what we will ask you to do when you do send us a donation, please drop a question to the show that you would like read out live on the show and we will get that answered as part of our next upcoming show following your donation. So please support the show. It helps us keep this thing ticking over and producing more and more awesome content. But this week, Newcastle Supercross, it's at McDonald's Jones Stadium. It's a full-size football stadium, so we should have a decent track for this round. It's not one of those showgrounds. It's not some poxy little um, tennis court stadium. It's a full-size football stadium, so I'm quite looking forward to seeing what this track will bring and if they have used all the space being an Aussie round. It's a triple crown format as well, which should be interesting and hopefully produce some interesting racing, Um, maybe even some different winners from the ones we've had so far this season. Now, in the 450 class, it's been Aaron Tanty and Justin Brayton who have split wins, and both are tied in the points heading into this week's race at Newcastle. So both will have red plates. It'll be interesting to see if one of them uh, separates themselves by the end of this weekend or not. Matt Moss is on a few points back in third in the championship, and he obviously had that pretty decent win uh, for himself in the uh, lights class at Paris Supercross a week or so ago now having that fantastic final night there going 1-1-1 on that Bud race in Kawasaki. So I wonder if that's going to give him a little kick in the gear or at least a kick in the right direction in his confidence uh, coming into these next two rounds and whether maybe that format from from being a triple crown there in Paris maybe helps him over these next, uh, at least this this third round in being a triple crown here in the Aussie rounds. Because I wondered... I wondered with Mossy, uh, watching him down in Melbourne for that uh, World Supercross round, he was better but not great. And again, at that opening round, I felt like his, maybe it was his fitness in those third races that maybe sort of slowed him down. So I think those traditional, you know, 20 lap, 20 minute type format races might not have been Mossy's, Mossy's jam at this point. Uh, so maybe this Triple Crown will see Mossy pushing Brayton and Tanty around a little bit at the front, a bit more than he has been already so far this season. So keen to see how that plays out. In the 250 class, it's been the Max Anstey show, to be honest. Uh, he's won the opening two rounds. He's got the perfect score for the series so far. Uh, but that's what this Triple Crown series is about. And maybe this will shake things up in the 250 class. I dare say... Max will be looking to try and get some good starts, but he's been inconsistent with his starts since he's been on this Honda. As you would see from some of those things that he did in Cardiff and even then in Melbourne as well. So with a shorter race, um, he might not have the time to get through the field the same way that he did at Adelaide, where he came from behind uh, Wilson Todd there, who was the early leader. In second place and third in the series is Nathan Crawford and Cole Thomas. Oh, Thompson, sorry. Uh, and those guys, yes, they've been okay, but they haven't really challenged Max at all in this this opening rounds here so far. Wilson Todd did so at round two, but he had that DNF at round one, which has pretty much put him out of the championship hunt, you would think at least, in a four-race series. So we'll have to see. Uh, hopefully it'll be a bit more exciting being Triple Crown format. Hopefully it'll give Wilson Todd a chance to get up there with some good starts and maybe knock Max off the top step for that at least that round. And maybe even um, shake up the points score a bit and maybe get Nathan or Cole um, a bit further into this thing. Maybe even Wilson, if he goes 1-1-1 on the night and they do, I'm not sure if they're scoring them individually or not, but if they are, that might give uh, Wilson the chance to sort of scrape his way back into the hunt a little bit if Max can have maybe at least one bad race in, on the night, you know. So we'll have to see how this shakes out, but it could be, could be quite an awesome night. Let's hope for some good weather. I haven't actually checked that coming into this round, being an open-air stadium. So it's always interesting. Newcastle Stadium there isn't exactly on the coast, but it's close enough. 
Uh, it's not quite your, your Wollongong Stadium there where it's literally on the beach, but um, it's close enough to the coast, so it could be some chance for some weather. We'll have to check and see. It could just be a beautiful night in Newcastle. Hopefully that's what we get. We will be at the uh, round this weekend in person, j- trekking our way through the pits, which will be cool again. Hopefully we'll get some good content for you listeners out there to sink your teeth into in the coming coming days after the race. Hopefully we'll get some good post-race interviews and hopefully line up a few guests for another show before uh, the fourth round, which will be the following week in Wagga. We're not sure if we're going to be able to get to that one just yet, but we will be trying our best to see if we can make that work. It's just got a few things coming up and I've got, unfortunately, more of my own medical stuff coming up soon here in, in the not too distant future. So got to make some plans around with all of that. But looking forward to Newcastle all the same. All right, now let's, before we jump into the emergency department list and the injuries that have been uh, occurring in this opening part of the Oz Supercross series, let's take a quick break. Hi there, my name is Eldon Baker and I'm from the Baker's Factory and you're listening to Always Motor. All right, guys and girls, let's jump straight into this emergency department list and for the uh, upcoming round here, round three of Newcastle Supercross. So let's jump into it. The emergency department, all the injuries, all the gory details, and when they'll be back on track. It's the list you really don't want to be on. That's right, you do not want to be on this list. It's a terrible list to be on, but it's a list all the same. So for the Australian Supercross round coming up, we've had, unfortunately, a bunch of injuries in these first two rounds, uh, and we don't have the biggest uh, entry list at these Australian rounds as it is, and we've got already a bunch of injuries that have taken out a few key riders, uh, and we've spoken about them previously, but not much has changed, but we thought we'd just quickly update that uh, heading into this round, obviously, for this weekend. So... Obviously, we're, we're going to hear from later in this episode, uh, Bailey Malkowitz. Uh, he has that dislocated and broken ankle. He's obviously out for the rest of the season. He will be likely not back until sometime in February or thereabouts. So a bit rough for him. We also have Jai Roberts, uh, who we also hear later in this episode with our interview He's out with that broken right forearm. Now, if you check out his Instagram, he's got a gnarly pick, and we reposted that pick uh, as our last update for the Australian Supercross injuries that we did a week or so ago. And you can actually, if you check out that picture where he's sitting there and he's sort of in the back of the medical truck there and he's got his, you know, doing the peace sign or whatever it is that he's doing there, um, you can actually see the forearm, the right forearm, you can actually see the two bones sticking up into the skin there where the break is. It's pretty gnarly. So he's out and about for a, a while. He also had that play to dish, as you'll hear from him later in this episode here of the Always Moto podcast. So, he won't be back also probably till about February as well. So both those guys, Jai and Bailey, will be looking to Ozpro MX is probably their next races on the moto. So something for them to look forward to, but it's a little ways off. Someone when the next two riders we're not too sure about where they're going to be up to in terms of their injury recovery. Brett Metcalf at the opening round of the Aussie Supercross that first or that Friday night there in Melbourne before the World Supercross round. He broke a collarbone and had it plated um, pretty quickly afterwards, which was good for Bretty, for Bretty, for Brett Metcalf, Metty. Um, just combined that terribly there, by the way. But anyway, so for, for Metcalf, it, like with all these collarbone injuries, uh, where they plate them at least, I <laughs> probably should speak from some personal experience here, but when I didn't get mine plated, it's a shit of a, shit of a scenario. Um, and mine's actually overlapped in its, in its healing process, but it is stable. Um, but when they plate them, they're essentially stable very quickly in the piece and it's just a pain management aspect from that. So he potentially could ride from two to four weeks um, post-injury and he's almost about that period now. He'd be about three-ish weeks. So there is a small chance that he might turn up for either this round at Newcastle or the round at Wagga, but if I was him, I probably wouldn't be. It's not too much. There's no real thing to gain for from his side of things uh, to do these last two rounds. So for, for him to show up, I'd be surprised if he did, but there's potential that he could. Haven't seen anything otherwise. I sent him a message on Instagram, haven't had any response. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. I'm sure he'll be floating around in the pits. So we'll see if he's actually gearing up or he's just in street clothes for the day. We'll, we'll chase him down and try and get an interview with him while we're there at Newcastle. 
The other rider as well, Luke Clout, uh, with that broken thumb also from that first night there at the uh, Melbourne round before the World Supercross race. Um, that broken thumb got surgery, but from the team updates where they've included Josh Hill for the final two rounds, that tells me that Luke won't be ready. But there have been some videos of of um, being put up that I don't know if they're recent or if they're pre this season here. But he was there is video vision of Luke riding as such, but you just don't know when and where that's actually occurred. So again, there's a small chance that he turns up for these rounds. Um, Probably unlikely and probably not advisable either. Like for two rounds, it's not going to make that big of a difference for him in the overall scheme of things. But we'll see. We'll, again, we might see him in street clothes. We might see him gearing up in Newcastle. We will be checking that out and I will be trying to see if we can get Luke onto the Always Moto podcast at some point soon to talk about things with his injury as well. Uh, as you heard from on one of the previous episodes, Connor Tierney, um, with that dislocated hip, he's probably getting a bit more function by now. It's been a week or two since we've spoken to him. He will, should be up and about a little bit more by now, but also he will be out for the remaining rounds of this Oz Supercross series. Joel Whiteman also out uh, from that very first night. Uh, he rode the sorry. He rode the first night on Friday night in Melbourne for the Aussie round. In that practice session for the World round that he was filling in on the MDK Motorsports team. Managed to break an arm and an ankle, and he's out for the rest of this Aussie Supercross series as well. The last one on our list at the moment is uh, Thomas Ravenhurst, or Horst, I should say. Uh, he had a big one in Adelaide at round two. Had a mixture of um, fractures from ribs, collarbone, vertebrae, and some bleeding on the lungs. So he he's out. The interesting thing with his one, the team update where I saw recently uh, has him listed as maybe trying to race the final round. I'd be surprised, but not you know, uh, wouldn't couldn't wouldn't be not impossible. But I'd be surprised that he tries because those ribs are going to be pretty damn sore. Rib fractures, unfortunately, again personal experience. I've had them recently. Had two. They suck. Um, they hurt basically all the way through the six weeks of recovery. No matter what you're doing, taking a breath, leaning over, having a sneeze, having a giggle, it bloody hurts. Um, and it's worse when you try and sit up out of bed. Um, no matter where they seem to be, whether they're on the front, the side, or around the back of the rib, like that's, that rib goes all the way around your rib cage, obviously, on both sides. Um, they're separate from side to side, but you know, depending on which side, they just hurt. So it would be interesting to see he had a, a, a bunch of fractures in the ribs there. I don't know if he'd be capable of even putting some pressure onto them, let alone taking another hit if he had, a, had even just a minor tip over. So it be interesting to see if he manages to line up. We're going to have a chat with his team when we get to the race uh, this weekend for Newcastle, and we'll see what their update is on him. Again, we reached out to him, but we haven't had any response back about we're trying to get him onto the show. But we'll see what it is, and maybe we'll hear from him next. Uh, Always Moto Podcast. We'll see how that works out. But that's the injury emergency department list here for the upcoming Australian Supercross round. Like I said, there's a few people on it, a few too many to be honest, but unfortunately that's how it's probably going to go this season with us not having had a Supercross series in a couple of years due to COVID. So these guys are probably, some of them will be their first series, first time doing a series in Australia. Um, and, and for others, they're just out of practice. So look, we'll see what happens these next two rounds. Hopefully not too many more injuries, but I'm sure there'll be something and we'll make sure that we bring it to you here on the Always Moto podcast. Let's uh, take a break now quickly and then we'll jump straight into the interview with Bailey Malkowitz. Thanks for listening, guys and girls. Hey guys, this is Grant Harlan and this is the Always Moto podcast. And joining us now on the Always Moto podcast, he's unfortunately on the injured list from the Australian Supercross rounds. Uh, it's uh, number 11 from Circo Yamaha. It's Bailey Malkowitz. How are we doing, Bailey? I'm doing all right. It could be a lot better. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. Unfortunately, when you're usually joining me on this podcast, it's not for a good reason. So, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, you're probably just couch surfing at the moment. Yeah, just uh, a lot of slouch on the couch right now and... Um... Or just a bed bug just stuck and not doing much these days. Yeah, definitely. So what's um what's happening? Obviously this injury happened down in Melbourne for you, what, two, nearly three weeks ago now? Um where are we up to? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the round the first round of Supercross in Melbourne, just everything was going all right and then had an accident and got hurt. I think it was yeah, about I think two weeks now ago. Um yeah, it's just 
start off good, coming in healthy and fit and fast. Just bad start, come back from last to fourth and then ended up on my ass and <laughs> broke my ankle, ended up fracturing my ankle in a few spots and dislocating it also and just done a few little extra things. Like I just fractured the top of my tib and a couple of fractures in my hand. But um yeah, I got everything <laughs> wait. Yeah. Got everything fixed. Um so yeah, just come out of surgery two days ago on the ankle just to put some screws and plates in. And uh, yeah, no, just now just on the mend again and finally uh, waiting to get the full recovery. So I think in about two weeks of uh, just sitting doing nothing, I'll be able to get a moon boot on and then start my my physio. So you're, um, so you're on crutches at the moment then, non-weight bearing, I gather. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, fair enough. And um, so did you have to wait a little bit there, like a week or so for the swelling and stuff to go down before they could do um, the surgery? I think I saw that you'd... You were sitting around, and then it was only maybe a few days ago that you got the uh, actual surgery done. Was there was there a reason for that there that 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 delay? Yeah, so when I was in there, um, I went under, and then I was initially planned to have surgery, but then just it was too swollen, so they just ended up putting it putting the ankle in a position, a better position. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, I woke up. This wasn't long; it was about thirty minutes. And then yeah, I just got told what they did, and the plan was they put me in for the the Monday after, so a week later to wait for the swelling to go down. So. Yep. Got all that done, waited then, went in, uh, ankles a lot less swollen, so went under again for about 35 minutes, and yeah, they got it done, and okay. yeah, now it feels a whole lot better than what it did before that, I, though, so that's good. I bet that little <laughs> couple of days there was just a bit bit torturous, for, with it sort of pulsating properly, too, for that period while it was trying to come down in size. Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah, the pulsing and the throbbing just sucks, especially uh, the ankle wasn't in place for a while, and yeah, just... Uh, now that the the screw and plates are in, it feels a lot better. It still sucks to be in this cast and not being able to walk and stuff, but yeah, definitely yeah, in the right position. So it's well, good. you're heading the right direction now, aren't you? But um, yeah. those those couple of days when you're at home waiting, did you did they tell you to do anything in particular to try and get the swelling down, or that you could do to help it? Like, or what were you doing? Just literally sitting on the couch with your foot on the top of it, sort of thing. Like, was there anything you're allowed to do? Um, they they. No, they say it was just yeah, obviously don't use it, keep it elevated like you should. Um, and I just have a cryotherapy little machine at home, and I just put that on my knee and my ankle. Nice, yeah. Um, when I could, and that's dropped the swelling a fair bit. So, no, it's good with that, and just yeah, pretty much just tried to keep the blood flow as minimal as possible to keep the ankle not swollen. So, yeah. Yeah, pretty much on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, how's the Netflix subscription or, or whatever s- s- streaming service you're up to now? Because I'm sure you're probably watching a lot of TV at the moment. Yeah, I know. Can't find anything new to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you have to uh, have to put out some Insta stories and ask for suggestions, mate. Yeah, I know. I need to start changing to something else. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what's um? you mentioned you've got sort of two weeks and then you'll be able to be switched over to a moon boot and probably able to put like partial weight bearing. Have they mm. given you like, a, you know, a bit of a time frame for when you'll be able to start doing like maybe physio and trying to move it at least unweighted and then like, you know, even walk or, or <laughs> run or anything like that? What's Have they given you time frames for this sort of stuff? Um, so the surgeon that at the hospital didn't really say too much about that because I did it at Royal Melbourne, not just put not private. Um, and I'll I'll go get it. I'll go get it seen. I'll go see a physio and an ankle specialist after two weeks, and okay. then they consult me out to get the best help I can get. Yep. But yeah, their their advice was just obviously the normal, just six weeks, no weight bearing. But mm. after two weeks, I'm allowed to go back and get a moon boot, and after I do that, I can really start my my icing and all that, and start my physio the, from what I can do without weight bearing so yeah that's a probably like obviously when it's in a cast you can't do nothing but um yeah as yeah. soon as you're out of that it's cut open and you're in the the boot that you can remove and put on and off yeah you've got the chance to actually start doing something with it so that you you're cutting down on some of that stiffness from the movement you know that will linger for a while so yeah i definitely definitely be getting in to see somebody at that point as soon as you can to start you know start what you're allowed to do and what's what's maybe pain free at that point too so yeah yeah yeah, that's it. So once I get that moon boot, then I'll I'll start heading in and getting the advice I need and doing exactly what I am allowed to do, and it'll help speed the recovery. Definitely, yeah, yeah. So what's what's the overall plan here? Like, obviously the season's done for you this year from Supercross. Yeah, um, yeah, have we got plans? Yeah, def- it's no, it never it always sucks when it's round one too because you've got to then sit through watching the races from the sidelines with your you know in this case your foot elevated and a cast on like it's yeah. it's pretty bad at that point. Yeah, exactly. Especially when you have two injuries in one year, it sucks. 
Uh, well, it's not not how you want any season to go, really. No, but um, exactly. <laughs> so, what what's the plan for next year? Like, are, are we back with Circo, or is this all still in the works because you're waiting on what happened with Supercross results or whatever? Where are we up to for twenty three? Um, I'm not really sure. I haven't got anything really planned at the moment. Um, I'm sure I'll find something for next year, but yeah, it's nothing in stone yet, and uh, still got plenty of time till. Um, we start talking about things like that, I guess. But, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, this motocross season wasn't the best. But uh, the Supercross season, obviously, is over now. But, yeah, it would have been good to get a good result in that, too. But I'm sure we can find something for next season. And, yeah, I'm not too worried. But, yeah, we'll sort something out. Well, hopefully, like, that little bit of the main that you did get before the injury, you know, you proved yeah. that you had some speed. You were able to, you know, work your way through the field at least. You know, obviously it didn't end well and get a get the result, but like you, you demonstrated some capacity there, mate. Like you, you showed that you had something. So hopefully somebody notices that for next year. Yeah, I mean, obviously just don't know what was going on. My practice starts are good, and then when I, when the starts came along in the in the main event and heat race, I just blew it. So. Ended up, yeah, a terrible start in that main. Stalled it, couldn't start it. And I was in I was last for a while. And then, yeah, made my way to fourth in, I guess, seven laps, I think it was. And then one small mistake when I was on the ground. So, mm. yeah, fortunately, I mean, I had the speed. I was really fast and, yeah, I like Supercross. And I mean, everyone's seen that I can ride it good. And I'm really from one of the – I was one of the fastest people there. But obviously, it doesn't matter if you're on the ground. So <laughs> No, it doesn't count for much at that point, does it? So <laughs> No, exactly. Oh, bugger. Oh, well, well, look, yeah, hopefully something, you know, pops up for next year and you can try again and try and stay healthy for the, for both of the, both of our, you know, Aussie series, motocross and supercross yeah, exactly. and That's it. get, get through it all. Cause that'd be pretty, pretty sweet. Hopefully next year we've got, you know, especially on the supercross side of things, it's the first year back for a couple of, a couple yeah. of years. Hopefully we get a bit bigger season for it next year and yeah, that'd be a bit more. Yeah, useful. definitely. It'd be a lot better than just four rounds for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, look, we appreciate you giving us a bit of time and to talk through the injury. Obviously, it's a sucky time for you, but we appreciate it still. <laughs> well, um, good now, thank you. Is, is there anyone you'd like to sort of get the chance to to thank at this point, sponsor wise, to to that's got you to this point? Yeah, I just just the whole Circo Motorsports team and um, yeah, Ford Dale for all the help while I was up there, and yeah, my trainer Levi for five four seven, and uh, yeah, just family, friends, and all that for helping me out. Yeah, awesome. Appreciate it, mate. All right, well, um. Look, thanks for your time on the Always Moto podcast. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys and girls, thanks for sticking around after Bailey's interview there. And I think we've got our first drop out of that interview. It's fantastic. Here we go. There's a lot of slouch on the couch right now. Yeah, that's right. We're going to have a little slouch on the couch, Bailey. Thanks for that uh, little saying there, mate. We're going to drop that into some episodes here in the future. We're hopefully going to get a few more of those sorts of drops coming up uh, across all of our interviews, but we'll see how that all works out. So Bailey's got a bit of time here coming up on the couch and obviously in the rehab center there trying to get back from those injuries that he just discussed with us and appreciate his time there here on the Always Moto podcast. Now, we're going to drop into our next segment. This is the first time you're going to hear this intro. It's probably okay. It's maybe not my best, but let's see what happens. Uh, And we're going to run through a little explanation. Hey, Doc, is it broken? Aye, it's fractured. So you're telling me it's cracked? Aye, undisplaced non-union. Come again, please, Doc. This is medical jargon explained for motor riders. Well, we will try and explain it. And that was me making a shitty effort at at an accent there to try and throw people out when we're doing that intro. But anyway, this is a little bit, it's going to cross over into almost a Dave's diatribe here, but we're going to try and explain something uh, every so often on the show here. That might be a piece of medical jargon that you've heard or people use and I'd really pissed me off when they don't use it correctly um and the first one i'm going to throw out there that should be stupidly obvious and simple but i'm sure somebody's had this happen to them before and we're talking about a broken bone right so you know everybody knows somebody gets a picture up of an x-ray bone's broken in two yep it's broken it really pisses me off when somebody goes to me no no but that's a fracture i know A fracture is a broken bone, you knobhead. It's just a medical term. Fracture is a medical term for a broken bone. So like I said, almost crossed into Dave's diatribe here, but that one really ticks me off. So if anyone is ever going to use the term fracture, that's fine. 
but just know that it means break and broken all mean the same thing. All right, people? That's that's my little medical ex- explanation for today. It's a short one, but it's an appropriate one. Uh, we have lots of fractures or broken bones in moto, and people need to know the context of the word and not say, no, 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 that's a, that's a fracture. That's worse because I've heard that too. So many people tell me that a fracture is worse than a broken bone, and I just really want to punch him in the face but anyway that's my problem uh, understanding some of this stuff better than other people can be a can be a burden to carry around at times but anyway so yes make sure you use it correctly and don't correct people that a fracture is worse than a break because it's not they're the same thing all right let's take a quick break on the show here and we'll be back with our interview with jai roberts hey this is Kate amrine riding for Monster Energy, Luke Soil, KTM, Team Tata Racing, and you're listening to the Always Moto Podcast. All right, on the Always Moto Podcast, we've got another interview from an Australian Supercross rider um, continuing on with the series that's going on at the moment. We're doing a bit of coverage of for it. Again, we've had a fair few injuries in this series, uh, and this rider is unfortunately on that list. It's the number 100 from the WBR Yamaha team. It's Jai Roberts. How are we doing, Jai? Going good, thank you. Thank you. That's the way, mate. How's that arm of yours? You've had a pretty nasty break there at that second yeah, in Adelaide. It was, yeah, it was pretty pretty brutal break, this one. Um, it's getting a whole lot better considering it's only been, I think, nearly coming up in two weeks this weekend. So still still pretty fresh, but I've made a lot of progress. I've got, got two plates in there, 15 screws. Most of the damage that I've done, though, was the muscles. I snapped the muscles and snapped the ligaments in my forearms, so I had to sew them back together. So that's going to be the main main part of my rehab. But is that I've, the part that like does the the crossover? So the 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 turn the hand over, the you know hand up and hand down, or open the door? Yeah, close, yeah, sort sort of, yeah, start yeah all them all them muscles and ligaments and like oh, and no. my elbows. I can, I can only straighten my elbow like halfway nearly. Yep. And then my wrist movement, I can move it like probably two centimeters either way. Yeah. So that's going to be that's going to be the real rehab part of it for sure it's going to take a bit of effort because that's always a nice stiff one to um sort of work through once that yeah once you're allowed to like what what have you been allowed to actually do now like you, you've had surgery oh. what a week ago now is it or yeah i had surgery this sunday night after supercross so oh, that was quick. Good. yeah i got, got surgery the next day which was lucky i got a private like private surgeon down there which is awesome yeah um but yeah i haven't been able to do anything i've been was it like the first 10 days i just i had to lay in bed i couldn't get sweaty couldn't get dirty couldn't get anything because oh, all the infection wise yep yeah yeah because all the wounds are still open they're still so i get my stitches taken out on tuesday so i'm still really limited to what i can do but i'm allowed to like walk around and just sort of um, there's not much i can do i can just walk around just take the dog for a walk or do whatever like that but yeah i'm still i still can't do any rehab or any physio on it at all okay so it's going to be probably another couple of weeks then before that's allowed mm-hmm. to then i'd say yeah i reckon i'm going to say probably yeah like at the four week mark, I reckon I should start be able to do something. So pretty much that brings us to Newcastle Supercross at the round three of, of Supercross. Yep. That I'll be able to start doing rehab, I reckon. Bugger, hopefully. that's going to make a bit of a rough time for you for the next few weeks with a, an arm yep. that's not much use. I'm assuming it's, it's your right arm. I'm assuming you're a right hander. Yeah, I am. So I can't do anything. Can't write. Can't, <laughs> I can't do computer work. It sucks. Can't do anything. Yeah. Look, and the, and the silly question we, like, I'm a physio is my background, but the silly question we always ask the people when they break a hand or a wrist is, uh, which hand do you wipe your butt with? Because that's going to be, it get interesting between you and yeah, your partner when yeah, you get home. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Oh. But that's, uh, you make it work. Yeah, you do. You do. Um, so what happened? How did we end up here? What What was the crash from from Adelaide? What did you do? Uh, the, the crash. I was just. I was in the whoops. Like the whoops, they were getting pretty cupped out. Like they'll. I don't know. I, I would. I didn't feel. I felt comfortable through them, but it was hard to get a correct rhythm through them every lap. So mm-hmm. I was just coming in, and because they were so cupped out, I ended up starting to jump through them. Just like I was doing triple, triple, or whatever the rhythm was through them. I was just jumping in because it was just the smoothest, the most consistent way for me. Yeah. And then one this lap that I crashed, I went. I hit a, like one of the cup square edge parts and it like kicked me off the side of the track sort of and I landed right near the tough block. Yeah. And the, the edge of the whoop was like, it wasn't packed in properly because it was, it was off the, it was really off the track, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then my, my front, like my wheels just sunk, like, dug into it and just sunk through. And then this, yeah, just kicked through me. I like, just threw me over the bars and the bike come down and landed on my arm. Oh, the bike actually landed on your arm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it? like, yeah. Yeah. I, I hit, I hit that soft spot and like kicked me out the front and then went over the bars. I went my head first, pretty much into the berm, and then the bike come down to slap me, like um, slap my side, which was like my arm, my shoulder, and like all that area. Damn. So was yeah. that the only thing you had, like pain wise, with like injury <laughs> as such? Yeah, I hit my head pretty hard. My helmet's pretty much destroyed. I think that's that's from the bike as well. But like, I didn't. I was, I was lucky. I didn't really get concussed or anything. So that oh, was, yeah, pretty, 
my arms only. Lucky I'm in bells. I love my bell helmet, so they, they protect me really well. But yeah, pretty much my only only my arm was the injury that I got out of that, which was lucky. You survived well, as much as you can say you survived, all right. But like the arm's pretty mangled. But yeah, oh, the, the rest arm's of it overall, bad. it's yeah. it's okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Bugger, mate. So what's uh what's the plan from from now on? Then obviously just focusing on this rehab when you can start it. Have, have you got any plans for for next year at this point, or, or um, anything in the works? No, not a whole, I've got a couple of things in the works. I've got to talk just thought. I mean, obviously, I'd love to say with WBR. I was only a fill in ride for Supercross, but okay. I got along with the team. I got along with the team very well, and I think they got along with me very well. So, like, I'd love to say with them and do something with them for next year. So, we're still in the talk. We're still talking about possible deals for next year. Nice. But, but yeah, I'm just going to just really see how my arm comes along, see if we have, how quick that gets back to 100%, and then just pretty much go from there. I know when I, after my surgery, my surgeon told me it was going to be probably for the muscles. Anyway, between twelve to fifteen weeks till yeah. that's back back to ninety percent, hundred percent. So I got a got a lot of rehab and a lot of physio to do before then. But yeah, I'll just I don't know, take it take it as it comes, see how we go. Yeah, at least you've got a bit of time till like, you know, the Aussie nationals sort of don't start till yeah, late March, in March or something. So yeah, it's yeah. you've got a bit of time. Hopefully it's enough time to be, you know, back and ready to go. So you have to wait and see on that one, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. But no, it should be right. Awesome. So, and and is there any sponsors you'd like to thank while you got the chance to that have got you to this point? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the list is massive to get me to this point. But the <laughs> ones that I love, the ones that I'd like to thank right now is just the WBR boys, the whole team there, um, Yamaha for giving me this opportunity, and then Bell, Bell Helmets for protecting my head. Um, Definitely. <laughs> yeah, they they I I owe them the world. They've they've protect, they've I've been Bell pretty much my whole life, so they. They've been super loyal to me, and I've been super loyal to them, which is awesome. I love being being able to trust trust the gear that I'm in. But nice, um, yeah, yeah no, just, just a massive thanks, really, the WBR boys. They gave me this opportunity, and I'm forever grateful for that. So yeah, thanks to them, thanks to the whole team. No, awesome, man. I'm um, good to see you out there, and but yeah, it just sucks that you've managed to make the uh, the injured list for already. So yeah, missed out that's on the, half the of the sport. season. <laughs> that's the, that's the sport. It is unfortunately, um, isn't it? It's definitely a, yeah. a rough and tumble sort of thing. So yeah, it doesn't um, yeah, doesn't go easy. But no, look, no, that's all right. appreciate the time on the podcast today, man. And um, good to catch up with you. Hopefully we'll see you back um, early next year. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate it big time. Thanks heaps. All right, guys and girls, thanks for sticking around again. Uh, that was Dry Roberts' interview there. Um, he's had a bit of a rough trot, obviously, with that injury there as well. It's been nice to have both Jai and Bailey on the Always Moto podcast for this episode number 36. Great show this week. We appreciate all the support and all the listens. We hope you got a lot out of that Alden Baker interview from last episode. If you haven't checked that out already, please do so. It's a fantastic listen. We will have more shows before this year is out. We'll hopefully have one or two more around the last round there with Supercross for the Australian round and potentially another one just we're going to hopefully talk to an American-based rider in their preparation period for the start of the AMA Supercross, which will be coming up faster than you can believe. It's uh, that first weekend or first race weekend in January, I believe, is actually the 7th or 8th or something around there of January. So it's coming quickly, but we're hopefully going to have one to two more episodes before the year is out. Just a reminder, um, and so that means please subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on those episodes that are coming up here. Just a reminder that I'll be heading back into surgery myself uh, for my injuries from earlier, from the middle of the year uh, in the next few weeks. So I'll be crutch bound uh, and couch bound for a little while, and I'll probably be... A little slouch on the couch right now. I will be a little slouch on the couch, but uh, we'll be uh, hopefully having some time to think of some new ideas for you guys for the new year. So if you have any ideas for the podcast, any questions you want to ask, feel free to send us a DM there on Instagram and get in touch. Don't forget to send us your T-shirt orders to our email, alwaysmoto2019 at gmail.com. Follow us on social media for up-to-date info on all things injury in moto. Just search Always Moto and then follow and subscribe. Make sure you have subscribed to the podcast feed, and if your app allows, please leave us a rating. It's super important. We're trying to get that rating system up. It will make us more visible to new listeners, and we will then be able to bring you more and more content. Uh, So please leave us a rating in your app if it allows. Don't forget to check out our written articles over on fullnoise.com.au. But that's it for another show. Thanks to Polar Australia. Thanks to Slantboard Guy for the show support. And remember, you've got to be smooth to be fast because if you're not, I'll probably be seeing you deep in the emergency department, maybe even the clinic having strapping tape thrown at you wherever it sticks.